Pavel Fischer， 帕维尔·费雪是捷克的政治家。和外交家，他在二零零三年到二零一零年期间担任了捷克驻法国的大使。二零一八年在参议院的选举当中也成功当选了议员，同时他也是对华政策跨国议会联盟 （IPAC） 的副主席。他还曾经参选过捷克的总统。而在今年九月份，捷克的参议院议长率团访台，就是由他所发起提议的。而他本人也一起来到了台湾，会见了蔡英文总统。而在不久的未来，他还考虑要再度参选捷克的总统。我们今天就很高兴可以跟这位远在捷克布拉格的参议员 Fisher 进行了视讯专访。Now joining us from Prague is Senator Fisher of Czech Republic. Good morning, Senator Fisher. Thank you so much for accepting my interview request. And my first question for you today is that we all know that、um, Your Excellency initiated a resolution to support the Czech speaker to lead a de delegation to Taiwan, and you also joined the delegation in early September this year. So, what、uh, prompted you to initiate this resolution in the first place, and what is your impression on Taiwan?、Uh I'm very pleased to speak to you and and to greet all my friends、uh, in your beautiful country.、Uh, you know, the friendship of、uh, Czech Republic and Taiwan is a very long-term friendship. I used to work in my previous years、um, as advisor of、uh, Václav Havel, the late、uh, president of the republic, and with him we had a very close ties. We even. Hosted your president in Prague、uh, in the、uh, 90s, so I think that this long-term friendship, which is shared by many in our parliament in our country,、uh, has some very important highlights. And、uh, when、uh, at the beginning of the year, the the ambassador of the China,、uh, People's Republic of China started to meddle into internal affairs of the Senate, we start just. Preparing kind of、uh, reply to protect the democratic、uh, parliamentary soil and、uh, decision making, and this is all the story shut cut.、Uh, we wished to visit Taiwan, and、uh, this is the reason why we prepared a whole motion because meddling in internal affairs of our country is something that we cannot tolerate. Okay, so what is your impression when you visit our president Tsai, and will you also consider inviting Taiwan's high-ranking officials, even President Tsai, to visit the Czech Republic?、Uh, my first impressions, and this was、uh, my very first、uh, visit to、uh, to Taiwan, was just outstanding. I am not only impressed by the quality of.、Uh, Uh, your people, but also by the beauty of your、uh, cultural heritage. We visited、uh, the famous uh, museum uh, that uh, you have in Taiwan, and we could admire or and and、uh, and appreciate the legacy of of centuries uh, uh, that you、uh, have there. And concerning the people-to-people -people contacts, I think that we have to continue not only on the parliamentary level. But go beyond, because you, we have to stick together. Freedom and democracy has to be protected and developed by those who cherish it. And your president's words were so warm and so clear to us that it was really well understood also in our own country, back in Prague.、Um, the public opinion here is very favorable to further developing of. Uh, friendship and and cooperation ties、uh, with Taiwan. So we are very happy to be the ambassadors of this friendship. Ah, glad to know. And in the Czech speaker's speech at Taiwan's parliament, he stated that he was Taiwanese, channeling the late U.S. President John F. Kennedy's defiance of communism in Berlin in 1963. His remarks were highly valued in Taiwan. And did you know the content of his remarks beforehand? And what do you make of his speech? You know, I was a、uh, the right hand when. Václav Havel prepared his speeches, the late president of the republic. So I have some know-how in、um, 
correcting speeches. This time I was not aware, uh, <laughs> so I was surprised myself. Uh -huh. But the highlight uh, and the message is very interesting to me because if you speak about this uh, I am Berliner uh, uh, quote by the American president, it comes in the very situation of the Cold War, which ended without violence. Uh, to be clear, I think that this is also a sign of hope mm -hmm. that uh, the situation in Taiwan, which is complex in geopolitical terms, can have an outcome which is not violent. And this is for me a sign of hope that I share completely. And after you return to your home country, do you think that the Czechs people have gained a better understanding of Taiwan? And what do you think uh, can Czechs Republic and Taiwan do to further strengthen our bilateral relations? You know, all the generations were concerned. My wife worked with the palliative care unit, so she accompanies uh, elderly who are uh, in the final stage of, of life. And many of them said, please inform me how the Taiwanese uh, journey ended if they are safe back at home. Because for many people here who used to live the Cold War period, the message and the situation is very clear. We have to stick together and develop uh, not only people-to-people -people cooperation, but also industrial or economic cooperation and political cooperation. I think that uh, the challenges to parliamentary and democracies are today global, and we have globally addressed them and share our own experience. And I think that for this reason, the Taiwanese um, official uh, gatherings that we could take part on, including the reception by your president, was really very important to each of us. Yeah, and since the outbreak of COVID-19, Taiwan has been doing a very good job in combating and controlling the virus. The Taiwanese government has tried to promote the idea that Taiwan can help. However, Taiwan is still rejected by the World Health Organization. And what are your suggestions for Taiwan to participate in the international community? Taiwan is champion. Uh, uh, you are uh, one of the uh, most successful examples that we can combat the virus without uh, losses of life and without slowing down of the economy. This is for me an outstanding result based not only on your uh, model of governance, but also on the level of uh, interest public um, and uh, private institutions pay to research and development and innovations. We see the high value added sectors in Taiwan progressing very rapidly. And this is something that we have to pay attention because we need to seize the moments of crisis to realize in what terms the model of governance or be it the model of productions has to be uh, adjusted. And for us, Taiwan, and for me my, uh, personally, uh, Taiwanese uh, uh, results uh, are clearly outstanding and we have to take inspiration of. And the health issues do ignore borders and do ignore also the leadership of the Communist Party of uh, mainland China. We who used to live in Cold War times, we know that uh, communist ideology can be over one day and health issues mm -hmm. will sustain with us. And I think that this is the major uh, reason why we have to, uh, uh, to pledge in favor of a, a special uh, space reserved for Taiwan within WHO. Yeah, Your Excellency, you are a co-chair of the Inter-Parliamentary Alliance on China so-called IPAC, which was established in June of this year. Do you think the world, especially Europe, has gained a better understanding of China's emerging powers? You know, within IPAC, we can share uh, what happens and what is ongoing situation in Japan, in Australia, or in Canada, or in Sweden. 
and everywhere we see very similar pattern. This is not only Europe-centric issue. This is not only Czech or Prague uh, issue. This is global issue that we have to address together. How to make our uh, democracies and our citizens resilient enough in order to make the proper choices. The security community is aware of many of the challenges we speak about, but the public uh, is very often uh, not well informed. And the parliaments are the bodies that can address this kind of questions, which very often times uh, offers us um, two different choices. And matter of choice uh, has always kind of costs behind, not only in terms of economy, but also in terms of political independence. Mm -hmm. And if we wish to preserve freedom, liberty and rule of law in our countries, we have to pay special attention what is uh, going on, not only in Taiwan, but also in Hong Kong, for instance. In Hong Kong, we see that there is a battleground of freedom for 21st century. And this is where the reason why we have to listen what London, as uh, one of the parties in Sino-British uh, declaration uh, preserving the autonomy for Hong Kong, declares today. The, the official statement is, uh, uh, without any doubt, very uh, robust and very clear. There is a breach on behalf of Beijing of this Sino-British declaration. And as allies with London, with the United Kingdom, we have to be very attentive and to listen to this message. This is a message that concerns also our own independence. Yeah, so do you expect to see Taiwan's participation in IPEC in the future? And what can Taiwan do to deepen its cooperation with IPEC? You know, COVID-19 uh, uh, brought uh, with the, uh, this outbreak a very difficult times for people-to-people -people exchanges. I know how many people, members of the European Parliament, were ready to travel uh, to Taiwan these uh, days, these weeks, and they had to postpone. But I think that once uh, we can, again, exchange personally, we will also uh, work uh, further on how to um, multiply uh, places where we can share and exchange. And uh, I am sure that Taiwan already today has so many um, very good ambassadors within European Parliament or in different various member countries uh, of uh, the European Union that we will definitely find the appropriate moment when Taiwan will join IPEC. This is my wish and I work on uh, this uh, with my colleagues. Thank you so much, and Your Excellency. I understand that you are extremely powerful and respected in your country and Europe. You served as Czech's ambassador to France and also ran for president in 2018. And so we'd like to know what is your next step? Will you consider running for president again in 2023? Uh, thank you very much for this introduction. I will share it with, with my wife. She will be interested. But uh, as far as my uh, next uh, um, challenges are concerned, we work right now on a very special law which uh, paves the way uh, to the further construction of nuclear power plant in our country. And uh, also companies, state-owned companies from Russia and mainland China are interested in the bid. So this is my current battlefield. We have to protect our strategic industries from the foreign influence. And concerning the next steps, I'm ready to serve my people and my country. So let's uh, let, uh, let us see. But I'm ready to uh, run once again. Yeah, thank you, Senator Fisher. We really love to see your further success. And we wish all the best in all your uh, every pursuit in the future. And thank you for your precious time and valuable opinion today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye.